Thank you so much. Uh, we'll turn to Mr. Uh, pardon me. We'll turn to Ms. McElwaite now for your opening statement. Ms. McElwaite. Thank you. I do want to offer a content warning and before I get started for anyone who's viewing this um, online and also for the committee of graphic, uh, very offensive language and descriptions of sexual violence. And I don't do this to be sensational. I do it because I think it's important for the committee to have an accurate uh, idea and understanding of the uh, situation with the, uh, the content on Pornhub. Uh, without mincing words. Um, so as I proceed, I do want to ask the committee to keep in mind that CEO Ferris Antoon uh, said to this committee, every single piece of content is viewed by our human moderators, every single piece of content. COO David Tassillo, he said there should be zero videos tagged under either child pornography or non-consensual acts categories. Those categories are banned from being used on our site as the keywords are. Child abuse material has no place on our platform. It makes us lose money, he said, quote unquote. Uh, I believe it's important to elevate the voices of survivors, and I want to read some uh, quotes and testimonies from survivors who have reached out to me personally over the past year. Kate, I was 15 years old. My ex was 20. He was into homemade videos and stuff, so he had videotaped us having sex. One day, he said, let me show you something. He pulled up Pornhub on his phone and showed me that he had posted a video of us having sex. I tried to contact Pornhub and get them to take it down but they never contacted me back or did anything about it. He also posted my quote unquote sexy pics on his account. Grown men and women were looking and watching me there. I'm disgusted. Beth, I was 16 and I was drunk once at a friend's party. I woke up, I was naked and pictures of me were on Pornhub along with my name and my phone number. I had calls and texts to the point that I changed my number. Nikki, when I was 14 years old, I made the decision that changed my life. I was having a sexual FaceTime call. I showed him areas of my body that were private. I didn't know at the time, but he was recording and he had uploaded it to Pornhub. The name of the video even had the words young teen, but it, that was not, not enough for Pornhub to analyze it and make sure it was consensual or legal. Years later, my classmates found it on the website and told me about it. I was 16 when they found it. The first one had over 1 million views. We got the first one taken down, but the identical video was posted over and over again. I reported it to the police and they opened an investigation. They told me they had contacted Pornhub to make sure it wouldn't be shown anymore, but the video was posted again. During these times of being posted multiple times, I was bullied my, by my entire school. Every boy and girl in my high school saw my body and it changed my life. Sarah, I found uh, out an explicit video of me was posted to Pornhub. I was underage. I did not send it to anyone in the best of my recollection and it got hacked from my phone i was horrified and i reported it and filed a complaint police took a statement i'm waiting for the detective to contact me even if the video is taken down it could always come back this could ruin my life and my future i'm terrified and i'm traumatized anastasia said there's a video on their site that was taken of me without my knowledge while i was underage this is still up on their site, despite me reporting it numerous times, stating that I'm underage in the video and that it was taken and posted without my consent. Linda, I'm now 20 years old and I'm a sex and porn trafficking survivor. At the age of nine, my biological mother sold me in exchange for drugs and for money. This happened until I was rescued at the age of 17 and placed into a safe house. For eight years, I was raped and I was beaten. And the video uh, was taped by hundreds of men, women, and even married couples. I never thought I would live to be 18 years old. I was hospitalized dozens of times, and one time I was forced to drink ammonia until I passed out and was raped for hours after that, even though my mouth and my throat were burning. I was forced to have sex with other children, especially young girls. I still have nightmares and extreme PTSD from this, but it's not fair that my life is so hard now because I was forced into a life of pornography as a child. I've had to get police involved on multiple occasions to get these videos removed from RedTube, owned by MindGeek, and Pornhub of me being raped as a minor. I don't understand why it's so difficult. 
Please stop allowing people to make money off of the torture and the coercion of children. It's not fair. Kira, at the age of 15, I was coerced into being filmed during a sex act, and that video had been uploaded without my consent to Pornhub. The uploader was also underage, and they had no way of confirming anyone's age or consent. I have been dealing with image, image issues, PTSD, and sexual discomfort since the incident into adulthood. This is my personal account, and I've heard similar stories from other women. I will never forgive Pornhub for allowing my abuse to be shared publicly and causing me to relive that pain years later. Amanda, leaked nude photos from when I was underage were put online, allowed to be uploaded by Pornhub, and men were allowed to vote on which child was the most attractive. Pornhub told me that there was no point in making a fuss since people have already screenshotted the photos, so deleting the video is pointless. Tiana, when I was 14 years old, someone recorded me performing oral sex without my knowledge or consent. The video was used as blackmail and was shared on Pornhub. Police contacted Pornhub uh, and it took them a while to delete it. It ruined my life and people still bring it up to this day. Caroline said, I spent two months begging Pornhub to take a video of me being orally raped at the age of 15 down. I was crying, screaming. I had a bloody nose. It was up for a year and a half before I knew about it. Beth, I was 10 the first time I was raped. My uncle saw those porn stories and used me to play out his fantasies. Two years later, I found the videos of me on Pornhub. I could go on and on. My time is short. I have many, many accounts of children who personally reached out to me that I've talked to had, who had their abuse immortalized uh, on Pornhub. Uh, all of the following uh, is a small sample of evidence uh, that has been documented on Pornhub in 2020 before the mass deletion of 10 million videos from unverified and unknown users. Videos on Pornhub titles, young teen gets pounded, old man with young teen, young girl tricked, a club where you can play with little girls and it's so fun. Cute amateur teen drunk and stoned. First BBC on drugs. Stolen teen secret peeing scenes with video cameras inside a girl's uh, toilets, videotaping them without their knowledge. Amateur sex tape stolen from teen girl's computer. Daddy fucks young teen boy virgin first time. Tika virgin from high school, Jakarta grade two. Jovencitas violadas, meaning young rape from an unknown user. A drunk teen f by black stranger. Innocent teenage girls are used and exploited. Crying teen, passed out teen. Very young South American with the tags teenager and young. A comment says, this girl looks 13. Chinese Northeast middle school. Junior high school student. Anal crying teen. I'm 14 with a video of a young boy masturbating. Gay 14, a video of a young boy masturbating. Panay junior high student. Um, I could go on and on again. Uh, uh, suggested and promoted searches by Pornhub that were found on their site as of 2020. These are uh, search terms that Pornhub actually serves up to its consumers. Abused teen, crying teen, punished teen, anal crying teen, teen destroyed, young black teen, young tiny teens, young girl, tiny young girl, sleeping teen, middle school sex, Snapchat teen, middle student, stolen teen sex tape, stolen teen homemade, very young teens. Comments on the site, there's hundreds of documented comments, if not thousands of documented comments where users are flagging these child sexual abuse material videos to Pornhub and they're ignored. They're on the site for months and even years. Examples are, isn't this technically child porn? She looks 13. That's illegal. Wow, she looks like she's 12. I'm not legal, but I have a wanking video. She looks nine. Trade CP. Uh, she looks like she's 12. She, like she hasn't even hit puberty. Again, David Tassillo told this committee that child abuse material has no place on our platform. It makes us lose money. And I would like to tell the committee that that is not true because child sexual abuse has made it its way to Pornhub in a significant way. And every single video of a child that is found on Pornhub or of, of an abused adult is heavily monetized. It's monetized with ads, premium memberships, 
data collection. In some cases, it's being directly sold for the profit of Pornhub, 35% uh, to Pornhub and 65% to the person who uploaded the sex act through the Model Hub program. I want to point out to the committee that any minor used in a commercial sex act is a victim of sex trafficking according to international law as well as domestic law. And I think it's very, very important for us to realize that. I also want to make it clear that Pornhub added insult to injury by adding an intentional download button to their system where every single video on Pornhub was made available to possess by consumers. It was transferred from MindGeek servers to individuals. 115 users a day had the ability to commit the federal crime of downloading and possessing child sexual abuse material because Pornhub had built that feature uh, into the design of their website. Ferris Antune said to this committee, the spread of unlawful content online and the non-consensual uh, non sharing of intimate images goes against everything that we stand for at MyGeek and Pornhub. That type of material has no place on our platform and is contrary to our values and our business model. When David and I joined MindGeek in 2008, our goal was to create the most inclusive and safe adult community on the internet. It was designed to value privacy. We knew this could only be possible if safety and security was our top priority. Anne uh, wrote me and said, revenge porn is a major issue. I was a victim to it two years ago when I wouldn't take back my ex-fiance. A couple weeks later, I received a call saying my private photos I sent him were uploaded to Pornhub. It was such a hassle to get them down. We have uh, scores of testimonies of victims who've experienced the same thing. Jessica says, most of my videos were done by my ex. Uh, I was too high to consent. I was blacked out. He put them on Pornhub without my permission. A small sample of content on Pornhub as of 2020. On September 24th, you could search the uh, initials GDP for Girls Do Porn, which is a known sex trafficking operation that Pornhub was well aware these were trafficking victims. And you could turn up 338 results for these sex trafficking victims on the site. Uh, other videos uh, were titled sister hard in the ass while she was drunk and sleeping. Drunk girl gets handcuffed and abused next to the party. F sleeping school girl after a drunk party. Tinder girl passed out at my house, so I stuck it in her ass. Uh, Tiziana Cantoni was a victim who commits suicide. Her video was on the site as of 2020. Anal sex with a drunk girl. Drunk Asian, a girl humped by my friend. Hidden camera, girls in the toilet at prom, CCTV in changing room, full naked hockey team. Suggested uh, search terms to users on the site, real hidden camera, hidden camera, voyeur, spy camp shower, stop f***ing me, and rape in Chinese. When pressed on the allowance of these kinds of non-consensual and illegal uh, videos on his site, David Tassillo said to this company, we are still a startup. He said that about uh, a, a site that is the 10th largest uh, trafficked site in the world that makes hundreds of millions of dollars a year on this, this content. Uh, in only a couple more minutes here, I want to just uh, finish here. Ferris Antoon told the committee that Pornhub was designed to celebrate freedom of expression. However, there are many instances of extreme racism uh, on the site as of 2020, including black slave girl brutalized, how to treat your neighbor, real drunk stupid chink whore, racist white slut sucks and black and says uh, And lastly, I want to point out that VP Corey Ehrman has said in the media uh, many, many times that they have a vast and extensive team of human moderators that is viewing each and every single video before it is uploaded to the site. And I want to tell the committee that I have evidence that actually, as of early 2020, Pornhub had under 10 moderators per shift, per eight-hour shift, again, under 10 moderators, uh, reviewing content on the site in Cyprus. They had only 30 to 31 uh, uh, employees per day looking at content, and that's for all of MindGeek tube sites. And these constitute the world's largest and most popular tube sites with millions of videos uploaded per year. 
Uh, and lastly, David Tisilla said, we digitally fingerprint any content removed from our site so it cannot be uploaded. He said this to the committee, but we have emails of Pornhub telling victims that they do not guarantee that their child abuse will not be re-uploaded to the site. And they callously tell victims, please educate yourself on the limits of our software. So on behalf of 2 million people who have signed the petition from 192 countries to hold Pornhub accountable and over 300 organizations around the world who are calling for accountability for Pornhub, I wanna thank this committee for taking this issue seriously and for conducting this investigation. Uh, thank you, Ms. McElwee. I, I just wanted to start with a question for you about what their response has been, uh, what MindGeek's response to, has been to you um, and the work that you and other advocates are doing uh, to victims and to journalists who are covering this issue and uh, any comments you might have about that. Yeah, thank you for that important question. Um, you know, the response of MindGeek has been, uh, you know, really inexcusable. They have sought to call advocates who are speaking out about this liars. They've called me personally a liar many, many times that I was intentionally misleading. Um, you know, they have harassed, uh, you know, those who are connected with MindGeek, uh, uh, we know are connected with MindGeek uh, and Pornhub have engaged in, you know, the harassment, the abuse, uh, and, you know, even the doxing uh, of not only uh, advocates, you know, like myself and my own family, uh, but also of, of victims, which is, you know, I mean, it's one thing to go after advocates, it's another thing to go after victims. Victims have been uh, blackmailed, they have been intimidated into silence, they have even in some cases been physically attacked, uh, where victims actually sent me photos of themselves after a physical attack. Um, and uh, with regard to journalists, you know, I have been sent emails from journalists around the world, even from Europe and even in Canada, where journalists have attempted to cover this issue long before the New York Times, because the Trafficking Hub campaign took off in February with hundreds of thousands of signatures, even in the first couple of weeks, and now, you know, we're over millions. But even before that, you know, the Sunday Times was investigating in early 2019, um, and journalists wanted to cover this issue but those from MindGeek, often using fake names and identities, like this Ian Andrews character, would intimidate journalists, would even threaten legal action against them, and would silence the, these stories from getting out. And I think that kind of behavior is what, uh, you know, one porn a performer, actually a porn producer, told me. She called it the MindGeek Mafia. And, and that's exactly what it feels like. You know, one advocate who had spoken against MindGeek in the past, when I first began this campaign, called me and said, Lila, do you have a safe room? And I said, no, why? She said, I think you should get one. I didn't understand that at the time. I, I think I understand it now. Uh, thank you, Lila. I, I also wonder, um, to your points um, about the, the gap between what they claim related to uh, child sexual assault material, non-consensual um, material. Uh, do you have any comments in terms of what um, what employees at, at MindGeek actually are experiencing, if, if you've ever spoken to any, and if they might have um, given you any understanding about how their so-called moderators, I think they actually call them content formatters, work? Yes, um, you know, a number of whistleblowers from MindGeek have reached out. I have been in contact with them. Attorneys have also been in contact with them. Um, and they've also been um, put in touch with law enforcement. Um, but these, uh, you know, whistleblowers who've come forward have, have, have revealed things about the way that Pornhub has acted with reckless disregard for human safety. They have acted in what I would think is criminal gross negligence. I mean, just from the idea that the world's largest and most popular porn site with 7 million uploads a day, I mean, sorry, a, a per year, uh, with 13 million videos available on the site at any given moment, 11 million comments posted to the site per year, many of which are indicating that this is child rape, this is sex trafficking, this is non-consensual, that they would think that it was okay to have 10 individuals per shift, including with bathroom breaks and cigarette breaks and lunch breaks, reviewing these millions of videos and actually guessing using an archaic Excel spreadsheet, which I've been given internal documents uh, from MindGeek. I know MindGeek's executives refused 
to uh, hand over such documents to the committee when you asked, uh, when they were presenting before you. But I do have some of those internal documents using an archaic Excel spreadsheet, where in 2016, they had under 100 flagged red words that they were uh, prohibiting on the site. Um, and you can compare that with what they've done now. It's, 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 it's absolutely reckless. And to the suggestion that David Tisillo and Ferris Antoon came before that committee and said that they had uh, you know, any kind of dedication to safety. They came before this committee and said that they were leaders in child safety. It's incomprehensible. So yes, uh, uh, I saw Layla raise her hand. So I hope that we can hear her for a couple of seconds and then I'll have questions. So Layla, I think you wanted to uh, intervene. Go ahead. So I just thought that this was a very, very important point because even after the major credit card companies have disengaged from MindGeek, causing them to completely upend their business model and make these very recent changes that they should have made over a decade ago, but they were driven by finances to make these changes now. But even so, David Tosillo came before this committee and said it was impossible for them to verify the consent of every single person featured in every single video. In fact, their new terms are only about verifying the uh, ID of the uploader. In many cases, the uploader is the trafficker. And we have that in a class action lawsuit that was recently filed just a number of days ago, where a man was verified into the Model Hub program using his ID, but they didn't verify the 16-year-old who he was raping in the video and selling for MindGeek's profit. They got 35% off the sale of those videos. And even to this day, David Tosillo has said it's impossible. It is not impossible. Is it easy? No, it, it, but it is possible. And not only is it possible, it's essential. Mm -hmm. Ms. McElwade, I, I, um, stuff with this committee, new stuff happens every day, stuff I've never ever seen before in the history of um, the, the committees that I've been on for many, many, many years. We got a letter today from, let's see, who did we get a letter from? Ferris Antoon and David Tassilio wrote us a letter, personal letter about you. Um, warning us that, uh, well, it's weird. It, it, it's about you, but then it's about someone named Benjamin Nolot, uh, who uh, they say is against legal pornography. Mr. Nolot is against same-sex marriage and women's reproductive rights. Um, anyways, they sent us this letter prior to the committee, which I've never had people being investigated send us uh, letters about people who are giving us witness testimony. Do you have anything to say about this um, letter that we received from the heads of MindGeek? Um, that's standard procedure for them to try to distract, to try to defame, um, to try to discredit those who are telling the truth about what is going on in their site. You know, I came before this committee and I gave you testimonies of survivors who have personally reached out to me. These are their words. I presented to you and I will present to you, um, you know, everything that I've said today, documented, screenshotted, um, to prove that it's actually factually correct. These are not opinions. These are facts. You know, this is uh, completely inexcusable that the CEO and the COO, instead of taking responsibility for what they've done, for the immortalization of countless victims' trauma, you know, some victims say that my trauma and my abuse will live on long after I'm dead. The thought of that tortures them. Instead of taking responsibility, what they do, and this is exactly what they've done, you know, for the past year and beyond, is try to attack, try to harass, try to quiet and to silence advocates who are telling the truth about their site. And that is unacceptable. Case of um, them gaslighting you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. We do have uh, two of our panelists that have their, their hand up. I'll turn to Ms. Nicolwait to begin with, and then with Monsieur uh, Fortin uh, uh, to follow. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think it's important to speak to this issue of complicity and, to, and knowing a distribution of this kind of illegal content. I do want to give the committee two uh, brief examples because I am a witness and I want to tell the committee, um, you know, the information that I have on hand that I have, that I have documented as well. Um, you know, there was, for example, you know, one of many examples, a video of a girl, um, the title of the video was School Girl is in Forest. The title, the tags in the video said CP, 
and un not 18, actually, the uploader was UA sex, which would stand for underage sex for anybody who would uh, be looking at that. And in the comments, um, you know, it, they actually indicated that the girl was in, in ninth grade, that commenters knew who she was and that she was underage. And not only did porn have moderators or, you know, reviewers look at that video, look at the tags, look at the title, look at the uploader and then approve it, but they featured it. They advertised that video on the site, on the homepage to get more views and more clicks. And that is the advertising of child sexual abuse material. And I have num numerous examples of that. There was one other um, instance that was particularly egregious that um, I was aware of this year in 2020 of a prepubescent, a very obviously prepubescent underage girl being anally raped and tortured. She was screaming in the video. It was, it was just horrific. This video was uploaded three different times by three different users over a period of weeks. Um, it was reported. The report was documented. It was not taken down. A number of days later, it was reported again. It was documented. It was reported. It was not taken down. Finally, I facilitated the transfer of the link of this video to the FBI. The FBI then sent it to the National Center uh, for missing and exploited children. And finally, they confirmed the video was underage and they did a demand to Pornhub to take it down. Pornhub finally took it down after weeks and tens of thousands of views with a download button so that 100 million people a day could have had the opportunity to commit the federal crime of downloading that child sexual abuse material. But then they left the uh, title, they left the tags, they left the views um, and the link available still to be indexed on Google to continue to drive traffic to the site uh, using that child's sexual abuse. And I have evidence of over 75 of such instances where you can see that the video was confirmed as child sexual abuse and it was asked to be removed by Nick Mick, but they left the videos live, uh, the, the, the data of the videos live on the site, you know, even with titles such as boy masturbating before school, uh, you know, she's so tight, uh, you know, and, and things like that. So that's obvious CSAM. That's knowing distribution, that's knowing advertising of child sexual abuse. I don't know if it'd be possible for me just to make a quick suggestion with regard to, um, you know, a solution. Uh, I think that it's important uh, for us to uh, serve those who have been victimized, provide the important trauma therapy um, and services for victims. But it's very, very important to work on the prevention side of this, because the truth of the matter is that once a video gets online on a site like Pornhub, where they had a download button, or anyone can screenshot for that matter, you know, this victimization and this trauma lives on. And it's a level of trauma that is, um, you know, really incomprehensible and, and multiplied for these victims where it's hard for them to ever, you know, recover. And many times we see that they become suicidal. And so, you know, I think we need legislation that would require with harsh penalties, the verification for every single person in every single video on one of these big porn sites to be age verified and to be consent and agreement verified, not just the uploader, every single person. I think that would go a long way in preventing this kind of abuse from happening in the future. And then I also think we need accountability because when a site like Pornhub and a company like MindGeek has engaged in this kind of behavior, a slap on the wrist for them is truly a slap in the face to the countless victims whose lives have been destroyed over the past decade by this predatory company. And I think that it would be a huge deterrent for others in the future to see true justice for these victims and to see this company truly be held accountable. My question is, MindGeek executives um, continue to talk at length about their fingerprinting software um, for preventing the upload of illegal content to the site. What is your knowledge about that software and its implementation? Yes. I, can, I can speak to that if you'd like. For um, sure. Yeah, uh, you know, I like I mentioned before, uh, you know, MindGeek itself has emailed victims telling them that they acknowledge that the software does not work. Uh, MindGeek itself has came, came to this committee and had said that to this committee that they acknowledge that that fingerprinting software um, does not work in every case because you can make small edits to these videos and then, you know, the hashing and the fingerprinting doesn't work anymore. Uh, and so I think that's extremely problematic when a company is relying and touting this kind of software as a solution and at the same time, fully understanding that it doesn't work and telling victims it doesn't work. And that speaks to the issue. We have to go to the front end. We have to go to the point of upload and have, you know, these procedures and compliance in place to prevent these videos from getting on the site in the first place.
Thank you. Uh, Ms. McElwain, were you looking to jump in there as well? I would like to. Thank you so much. You know, Mindy came before this committee a couple of weeks ago and said that they were a partner of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. I would suggest they're not a partner. I think you should ask Nick Mech about that statement, and I think they would tell you they're not a partner. What Mindy did was what they should have done many years ago, which was finally register in 2020 to begin reporting um, to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children uh, in the USA. On the 2019 ESP report for NCMEC, there were zero reports from MindGeek or Pornhub. Not only that, we have evidence of their senior community manager telling a user online publicly uh, who had said there is child pornography all over Pornhub, what do I do? And she actually said, you do not need to report it to the authorities, just report it to us. In that same year, there was no reports from NCMEC, I mean, sorry, from Pornhub to NCMEC. Moderators have told me that they didn't even know what NECMIC was, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And I would think that moderators, these reviewers would need to know who that agency was in order to be uh, you know, taking the proper procedure. And victims themselves, the last they say, victims themselves have said that sometimes they have actually reported their child exploitation to Pornhub and then gone over to NECMIC to report there as well and that they have discovered that there was no report coming from Pornhub or MindGeek about their particular instance of exploitation. Thank you, Mr. Angus. Uh, Ms. Micklewaite, uh, we'll turn to you. Uh, I just I, have I one last comment. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share this. I think it's relevant to this conversation. Another piece of information that I was made aware of through a MindGeek whistleblower moderator was uh, that I think should be fully investigated was this idea that they have multiple different folders that they're supposed to put flagged content into that is um, illegal or child sexual abuse material. And he suggested that there's something called folder A, where very, very young looking children go that are under the age of 12, but there's folder B. And folder B, um, he said, was used for 15, 16, 17 year olds. And he suggested that he was not confident that that was being reported, uh, even though that is illegal child pornography. And I think, as a point of um, investigation, I think it's very important to be looking into that. 